Okay, hello and welcome. Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. I bought them on uh, Blu-ray and rewatched them. I don't think I've really seen them since they first came out. Maybe I've seen them a couple of times. Yeah, so I thought I'd review them. I'll try to combine it. The main thing is, I mean, I do sort of like Tarantino. I think his dialogue is usually pretty good, pretty fun. These movies are, I think, style over substance. So the question is whether the style is worth it. I don't think they have a lot of substance. They're very mixed in their sort of tone and genre. Like there's a lot of black humor or dark humor. There's a lot of yeah comedy. There's action. There's there's parts that are very immature and silly. But then it also does have themes of revenge and like kind of things that would really make you angry. But that's the thing. I think Tarantino understands the language of film. It reminds me a bit of David Lynch maybe, where his movies don't completely make sense. But that's not the point. It's your dreams don't always make sense, uh, and your, and I also mean like your dreams, your aspirations. They don't always, they're not always fully realizable, or they're not always sequential, but they can still resonate. Something can still affect you when you have a discussion with someone. The words you say don't always make sense, as long as the ideas get across. I guess uh, the point being, movies affect you, and they're they're kind of um. <laughs> Already I'm going a bit crazy here. It's like a, it's a interactive in a way because your mind fills in the blanks. Like, for example, I often find people will criticize plot holes, but they're not consistent. A movie won't show you everything just because the movie jumps from one location to another or from one camera shot to another. But you don't consider that a plot hole. So we have to fill in the gaps to some degree. Anyway, it's, the point is... It's kind of interactive. You're filling in certain gaps. And I think Tarantino and David Lynch, for example, understand that. And so they, in different ways, play with that. Tarantino, you get the impression he's watched a lot of movies. You can really see the influences on uh, Kill Bill, that he's kind of um, imitating them and kind of having fun with them. I do like Uma Thurman. I think she's pretty cool, pretty good in the role. Like, it, it is a pretty tricky role. There's a lot of ups and downs with her emotions. It is also, the first one's quite stylish and cool, how it just throws you in the deep end, like, Bill, it's your baby. And then just, my baby shot me down, bang, bang. Actually, I do like the music, although comparing Tarantino to, like, Spielberg, for example, who usually works with John Williams, where original music is being created, composed, and then put together, and there's themes that go through, it's, it's on a different level, but... Having said that, I feel like Tarantino is pretty good at that kind of, um, I don't know, DJ, mix master, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like someone who just picks, like a mixtape for a movie, where he's using songs mostly that I don't know, that I've never heard before. But they're really nice. Some of them are really nice pieces. So there's the big action sequence in volume one with the... <laughs> the slow motion walking that's i don't know why that's always so cool people just walking and like not caring and you know just the swagger slow motion big epic music different shots i do like that epic uh fight scene i think it's pretty cool the, the action is exciting in terms of it feels like there's a lot of stunts and it reminds me of um captain america's civil war and winter soldier in particular those ones have Lot of, you can really feel when someone gets punched and when someone gets kicked and hits a wall that just there's something about it that feels real you feel the impact maybe the way it's shot and i, I think um kill bill kind of has that as well it feels like there's, there's a lot of little different shots that will cut between but it's like a, it's really a person hitting the ground pretty hard or smashing through something or really kicking or really throwing something and it's kind of comical and cartoony in a way obviously some of the <laughs> <laughs> that that's the thing kung fu is kind of funny there's these um i guess tropes out there about like ninjas or samurai and like the way they can just like balance perfectly balance and i wonder how much of it's true i kind of like batman begins ty uh goes into that a bit with like you know you'll be able to make yourself disappear or go invisible and bruce wayne's like invisible and <laughs> like they throw like a ch and they kind of look go up like effectively you can be invisible teenage mutant ninja turtles kind of does that as well there's a bit of a feeling of like somehow you can be invisible they kind of hide and you get little glimpses but then there's also just camera tricks yeah kill bill has a bit of that as well where they're just able to kind of jump in the air and there's 
wires, but it generally works. And a lot of it, it yeah, it's kind of in between realistic and just over the top stupid. And the same with the dialogue, it kind of flirts between, um, like pretty cool, logical, hard hitting lines and just really s silly, frivolous <laughs> things that just kind of go on and on, but they say it so seriously. The way Uma Thurman says some of it. They're like little kids in the playground that have a disagreement that are just kind of fighting and teasing each other. But then they're all killing. I felt awful for that lady who speaks a few languages and her arm just gets chopped. Like, that's uh, brutal. I think it's what freaks me out is the screaming. You know, it was the same with... I'm spoiling the movies, by the way. If you haven't seen them, I think they're pretty cool. They're pretty exciting. They're very silly. Style over substance. Action. Comedy kind of weird it's like you're on tarantino's weird journey but he's he's watched a lot of movies and it, he likes movies it comes across and it is engaging it is pretty exciting but that's i almost feel like he's better at making movies than most people or than a lot of other filmmakers i don't think he's among the best but he's better than a lot in my opinion but i i'm still waiting for him to make a really solid movie i don't think he's made his schindler's list or that kind of thing so yeah in the second one the part with l driver Daryl Hannah with the eye, the poke in the eye. I was dreading it because I remembered that very clearly. And then she just starts screaming and it's just more of an intense real scream. I think most horror movies don't get that. Someone will get, I don't know, stabbed or attacked and they'll just scream in a very generic way. But there's no, I don't know, I don't want to go into too much detail. But when someone really is in pain, like it's a very different kind of sound. I saw um, on Penn and Teller's show, Bullshit, they had an episode on circumcision and that was... um very hard to take. I think maybe I saw it a couple of years ago. It's a blood curdling kind of kind of scream. And that's how I think people scream when they're in like real pain. It's panic. It's it's guttural. It's very different. It's very hard to hear. It's the kind of thing that will haunt you for a long time. And anyway, when Daryl Hannah gets hurt, I think it, it has a little bit more of that kind of panic to scream and like, I'll kill you, I'll get you and like uh, you know, she's now got no eyes, she can't see anything kind of scary but i don't know maybe she deserves it she's a bad guy that's the that's the thing They're, all these characters are kind of like mixed in terms of their morals i liked the animated sequence in the first one um with lucy lou i, I like the style boom -ba -dum, boom -ba -dum, boom -ba -dum, boom -ba -dum, boom -dum, boom -ba -dum. like there's some music when she's doing the sniper <laughs> whatever i can't think of it I, I won't try to imitate all the music but there is some very nice music that sequence i thought was pretty cool although it's still it's not the animation is nowhere near the detail of like the early disney movies and some of the other disney movies it's it's still okay for its style and it's got kind of a nice feel to it but it's there's nowhere near as much going on like in terms of just the number of frames the amount of movement the amount of detail the amount of effort and time and money put into it basically but still it was pretty sad and uh messed up and i like those kind of sequences in movies where they're able to compress kind of a bigger story into a short time and you, you get the idea of it and i do like lucy Liu. a lot of the actors are pretty i, I don't think she's amazing but they're, they're pretty good in terms of being intense in their moment in their character <laughs> like when someone questions this guy is like just really like he's getting a huge headache and like and then blurt something out about her background and then she just gets up <laughs> it's very over the top that kind of stuff i i like the part where i i don't know it's michael Ma madsen i kind of like him there's just something he's just very calm and like in this movie in kill bill volume 2 he just seems very lazy and like whatever <laughs> the way he I, I felt like uma thurman like beatrix kiddo it makes her look kind of dumb though she just goes up to the door and then gets shot and I didn't understand, he must have done something with the shotgun. So maybe it wasn't loaded, but it just had the powder. And it just hits her chest and it must sting or something. Or hurt. I don't I don't completely get that. Maybe it's just like a bit of an impact and it kind of burns, but it doesn't kill you. And then being buried alive, I mean, that's just terrifying. I can't, it's hard to think of. That's up there in terms of terrifying. But the way she's able to do that. <laughs> See, that's the thing, it's just, parts of the movie are just incredibly stupid, but I think it generally works. It just, it would be nice maybe if the tone was a little more consistent. It's very tongue-in-cheek at times. The whole sequence where she's learning from 
I forget the guy's name, but he's got the <laughs> the beard, white beard, and it keeps zooming in and zooming out. It's just over the top. But and that really ties into that cliche of like the very strict kind of you know um, teacher who's just basically a complete jerk to you constantly, and somehow you learn from that. I get the idea of standards. I get the idea of a certain amount of strictness and pushing someone, pushing them further than what they think they're capable of. I get that, but in his case, I just think it's a bit over the top. And I also get the idea of there could be a bit of a like even in um, Empire Strikes Back. That's because Yoda's one of my favorite. He is right here, Yoda, <laughs> and um, I even like Splinter in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're among the best, I think, like sort of leaders, wise kind of. They teach, but they're not jerks. But Yoda does trick Luke, and he pretends to be like a little silly Muppet before revealing who he is. But I think he does that for a reason. He's kind of testing Luke, and he realizes Luke is maybe not as uh, clever, or he's not as careful a thinker. He's already making assumptions. And if he was smarter, he would at least click on to who is this little creature. He wouldn't have made assumptions because it's kind of cool Luke assumes Yoda is some great warrior and so he's just dismissed this little creature it couldn't be Yoda but other than that so Yoda's kind of tricky and challenges him and questions him and then but he's not a jerk to him <laughs> like this guy is but okay fine we get the impression it's still she learns things from it he's tough but all right I liked the order it was told in I mean not that I specifically felt the order Tarantino did was the best but it's 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 kind of nice. The, you sense that he, there's a reason he did it this way, and it does keep you interested at each time. There's a bit of action at near the start of the first one, and we get to see the ticking, um, the crossing off the list, or writing the list, and it's also a bit kind of out of order, but then it has the climax of the massive fight. It's interesting that that massive fight, it goes black and white for part of it, which... It, it kind of annoys me. I think it works stylistically in a way, but my impression is that it was too bloody. And <laughs> there's already there's already so much blood before that. But I can't stand the idea that there's some group, some like little bureaucracy, this little like that decides, you know, we've got the ratings here. We get these random well, high level violence and what is this one? Whatever that says. That they decide what the limits are, what you know, I can censor things for myself. If there are there are some things that I do feel are too violent or that I'm not interested in, and I don't watch them, I can easily walk out of a movie, or I can say, yeah, um, I watched part of it and then I I lost interest, or I don't want to see that kind of movie. But people could do that. My brother doesn't watch horror movies. You know, he doesn't need a a board to decide that. So I I find that quite kind of annoying. It does feel like an impingement on your freedom. But anyway, the black and white kind of works. It, again, it's, it's very silly and over the top where they're all kind of nervous and they keep fighting, but it's it's exciting. It's uh, it's a different kind of thing. It's not to be taken too seriously. I like the Asian girl as well. I don't maybe Japanese background. I forget her name. Is it Gogo or Yuki or something? I think there was going to be a twin sister or another sister in the movie, but that didn't happen. But yeah, she's got that swinging thing and... The fight sequence was pretty cool. It's also pretty cool how she gets the sword and there's that guy there, Hattori Hanzo, and it's it's just a big deal. You get the impression there's all this history. And again, I forget the music exactly, but it's very nice. Some very nice music that seems to work well for it. The images do go well with it. But again, I feel like there's not a lot of substance. It's not like truly meaningful. Uh, a lot of it is just given. It's the way it's filmed. It's the way it's done. The way they say their lines. But it, deep down, it doesn't have a lot going on. Let's see. I did like uh, near the end of the second one when she confronts Bill finally, the last one. And then there's that little girl is there and it's her daughter. And Bill is just kind of playful. And it's just like, of all the things like that, that is pretty tough to try to deal with. And kind of messed up that he kind of uses that. But yeah, it, it is kind of weird. But at the same time, it's kind of like <laughs> top priority is to try to kill him, and he does seem to nearly trick her, like he shoots her with the thing to make her tell the truth, the undistributed truth, and he even shoots a gun, like, so she seems to leave herself kind of vulnerable to Bill, but they do, they do talk, it's like he doesn't just kill her, and then they do randomly kind of sword fight, it's, it's, it's kind of weird, where there's like a, like a mutual respect, and they kind of talk, but then they also, there's tension, I generally liked it though, I thought, 
other than the just I didn't buy that the bride is kind of like the deadly assassin, but then makes these stupid errors, like he's just unprepared in some cases. Like she just goes to lunch for her sword and he just shoots and it's like <laughs> why didn't she bring a gun? Why didn't she already kill him at that point? You know? It just like even if your daughter is there, you can explain afterwards. Or you can do something, take her aside, and then go and kill him. Uh, yeah, I thought the speech about Superman was kind of interesting. That I don't know if he's the only superhero, but it's like he's one of the only ones where it's Clark Kent is really his disguise. His normal self is Superman. And the, the point being that Beatrix Kiddo is a bit the same. I, I do like that concept. That I was actually thinking volume, you could have a volume 3 where she like... Uh, because there is the L driver... Daryl Hannah could still be alive. She's blind, but that's an un a thread that hasn't been finished yet. And yeah, the idea of like a, an ex assassin who's now with her daughter and she's driving off and she's happy. Like there's there's tension there. There's potential for more story. I'm not saying that should be done. I just thought it was interesting that it's a possibility. I also felt like I kind of understood the te like why Bill did what he did. You could say yeah, okay, he's kind of a a bastard or whatever he that he overreacted you know but i also feel like the bride uh beatrix kiddo she should have just told him like i don't know why she couldn't say look i'm pregnant and i'm leaving or was she pregnant with his child in which case why was she romantic with him like why didn't she like either like either commit or don't commit you know tell him i'm pregnant and we're having a baby and let's let's get out of this business Oh, I found that it's a good example, that part where that woman tries to assassinate her with the shotgun. Although I hate when in movies it's just luck that she bends down at the right time and misses the shot. It's like you want your characters to be skilled and win because they're the best because they're smart, not just out of pure dumb luck. But that, that part is just so stupid. And she's like, I could shoot you and they're both holding the guns. And like, I'm pregnant and look at that. And then she's reading the instructions. <laughs> She's like, I can read it by myself. <laughs> and then just kind of leaves and then she says, congratulations. And then just... <laughs> or something like that. It's so stupid. So I get that she wants to get out of assassinating, but like, did she not know that she could become pregnant? If Obviously she slept with Bill, uh, I presume, right? Because she says it's his baby. So did she not know that, that could happen? Or was that it was unplanned? Or I don't know. I don't get it. So, yeah, I, I just think it could have been prevented. Like, you want you want the concept of a movie to be based on something solid so you can relate to it. And it just feels like, I mean, okay, fine, she decides to run off, but, you know, and, and Bill did kind of overreact, but it does seem like he cared about her, and it would have been better for her to just be upfront about it and say, look, I'm pregnant and I really want to get out of this kind of thing. And then he could go with her, or if he disagreed, then she could pull out a gun and shoot him first or something. But that's that's still messed up. At least he might say, mm, all right, fine, and then she could run off. But anyway, so the movies are kind of, I, I like them. The style's pretty cool. It's like over-the-top kung fu meets all these different sort of genres. Comedy, action, with a bit of, a bit of drama, a bit of uh, some good acting moments, some good dialogue. But yeah, kind of kind of just silly fun if you're in the right mood i think they're pretty entertaining they're kind of yeah over the top it's like a little kid got to play with movies and make their own movie come alive but it's also at the same time it's like a it's maybe like a teenage boy like a 14 year old boy's fantasy of a movie of like overall graphic violence and uh big epic revenge story and, and kung fu and all of that but with some good music and good filmmaking but it just Still makes, I just wish, I feel like Tarantino can do more, even with his other movies. I haven't seen The Hateful Eight, I just think there's the potential. I think Pulp Fiction is pretty good, I have to revisit it, but uh, it's a good in a different way, I think. It's almost like commentary on movies, or just, yeah, it's style over substance. The style's good, but I just like more substance. Anyway, so, I don't have much more, more to say, so thank you for watching, bye for now.